Did you know people have tried to cure homosexuality with forced cuddling, horse stroking, and monkey testicles? Whether you call it ex-gay therapy, pray away the gay, or sexual orientation change efforts, the practitioners try to make it sound so reasonable. Why have they been rejected by every real medical organization in the country? In the 1800s, Dr. Graham Hammond advised patients that they could overcome homosexuality by riding a bike. If that didn't work, you could go see Dr. Havelock Ellis. If you were a man, he'd hypnotize you, get you drunk, and send you to a brothel. If you were a woman, he'd just tell you to see your husband. These treatments gradually morphed into actual mad science. There was the ice pick lobotomy, where they'd poke you in the brain until you stopped being gay or alive. There was castration by Catholic organizations, electroshock therapy, where you'd have electrodes placed on your crotch and then watch gay porn while taking drugs to make you throw up. There was primal scream therapy, where you just shout a lot. That one was also advertised to make women's breasts grow larger. Huh? Not like you need one more reason to hate the Nazis, but one of their tricks for curing homosexuality was surgically implanting extra testicles. This treatment was pioneered by Sergei Voronov, and there was so much demand that he set up a monkey farm on the French Riviera to harvest the organs in question. Do any of these treatments work? Well, I've never tried any myself, but after a few decades, scientific consensus was basically like, okay guys, please knock it off. Most doctors stopped doing any kind of de-gaying decades ago, and that left just the real quacks. For example, more recently there was Richard Cohen, who advised men to make themselves straight by hugging each other, and then by hitting pillows with tennis rackets while screaming angrily at their mothers. Richard said that the ghosts of dead ancestors made you gay, which is definitely scientifically proven. Then there was Joseph Nicolosi, who said that you could tell if boys are pre-homosexual because they're more likely to play the piano. Nicolosi's tactics were pretty typical in that they were completely made up. Back in 1990, he told the Washington Post that he had a cure rate of about 15 to 20 percent. A few years later, it was 90 percent. Good job. When Newsweek asked him about his success rate in 1998, he said, I don't have time to collect data. Fair enough, he's probably touring the monkey farms of the French Riviera. <laughs> Today, you might be told to stop your gayness by snapping a rubber band on your wrist. You might be subjected to an exorcism. You might try downloading an ex-gay app. Or you might be sent to the Cowboy Church of Virginia, where you can be freed of your homosexuality by touching a horse. <laughs> Ex-gay activist Ann Polk has some advice as well. Just look at a tree. Every time she started to think about women, she says, I just look out a car window and say something like, Gosh, Lord, there's a tree out there. That tree is green and has leaves on it. Mm -hmm. Over time, that process made me displace all lesbian thoughts. And eventually married a tree. Just kidding, she married a guy named John, who also claimed to have cured his homosexuality. The two of them were prominent ex-gay proponents for years until, you can probably guess where this is going, John is now an openly gay chef in Portland. I guess he just didn't think about enough trees. But the gold standard of ex-gay snake oil might be Jonah, a religious group that steered people into a program called Journey Into Manhood. Don't mind if I do. Ha <laughs> The idea was that you would spend a few hundred dollars and then go camping in the woods with a bunch of other men. You'd have some sing-alongs, do some cuddling, blindfold each other and listen to the sound of people playing basketball, and then everyone would take their clothes off and dance together by candlelight while touching themselves. That is what straight people do, right? So let's see, if you want to straighten yourself out, all you need to do is ride a bike, get drunk at a brothel, stare at trees while petting horses, and then find some guys to get naked in the woods with. Well, that certainly sounds like real therapy. Journey into manhood still exists, as well as independent practitioners who call themselves therapists. They need to look respectable, but if you peel away the friendly face, there's the same basis for today's treatments as the wacky ideas of the last hundred years. Which is to say, no basis, no evidence of success, none, zero. What there is in abundance is data that it's harmful Kids who are rejected by their families for being gay are eight times more likely to have attempted suicide, six times more likely to experience high levels of depression. Dozens of major medical organizations have said that treatment to change sexual orientation doesn't work. That's why states are now banning the practices and forcing ex-gay con artists to leave the country if they want to continue their harmful treatments. So by all means, go camping and cuddle, ride horses, look at trees. If you want to electrocute your genitals, go nuts. Ha -ha. But that's not going to change who you fall in love with. Nothing can do that. There's just no monkey testicle big enough.